Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. Whippy! I want to share with you guys uh, just something that I discovered. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love learning. I'm always learning. I'm trying to, and you know what's interesting? I'm not always just learning just about art. My whole focus isn't just art. My I'm learning in many different ways from a lot of books that I'm reading, just different people's lives. I love listening to biographies. I love listening to people's stories. I love listening to the journey of pe have, how people so oftentimes start from nothing, which in all honesty, we could say everyone starts from nothing. We all start from nothing. We all, we're all babies. We grow up. We don't know what we're going to be in life. We don't know what we're going to become. And we can start from nothing in that sense. You can start from nothing within the way that you're actually living, growing up really poor, or it depends what part of the world you live in, or you could grow up really wealthy. Everyone's got their story. Everyone's got something different. But we go through all these experiences, and as we get older, I find my interest in learning just gets more and more. Again, it's not just art-based. I feel like with art, my art, progresses, you know, through every drawing. When I look back at my old drawings, of course, I see improvement. Um, but what I want to share with you is something that I just sort of like just hit me like lightning the other day because I'm always talking about the importance of observation. And people go, why should I draw in my sketchbook? What's the point? Why? What's the point of observing if I'm not drawing? What is the, what, what's the reason for doing this? How do you get better that way? And then it kind of struck me. So I'm reading this book right now, and I got to tell you, this book is crazy, and I'm going to throw it out there. This is not for everyone. It is, I'm, I'm barely breaking through this book. I've been reading it for almost uh, a little about 10, 11 days now, and I've only read like, uh, if you can see just this much of it right here just trying to break through the concepts of what it's even saying. It's just like, whoa, this stuff is just deep and crazy and wild and you gotta be in a place. And, and it's funny how the author writes things, but the name of the book is uh, this, if you guys can see it there. It's called Magic, The Principles of Higher Knowledge. Now, it sparked my curiosity. I actually think a friend gave this to me and I can't remember who. And I might even still have their book and I don't know whose it is. But I've marked all over it now, so I'll buy you another one. This was a long time ago, but I just was digging through and found it. The principles of higher knowledge, you know, just again, it's becoming the awareness and everything. But I, I always, every time I'm reading um, books, and it could be about psychology, it could be about it just a lot of different things. I always try to tie it into art somehow. I, I try to, when I'm reading things, I try to tie it into my experience, my journey, and how can I gain from this? What can I learn from this that maybe I could just revert and tell some other people about it? And this is where I want to tell you guys. So the thing that struck me like a bolt of lightning, and it's almost like it's easy. It's almost like, yeah, duh, of course. But what this guy wrote, and again, I, I thought it was uh, great. He says, the stronger the impression, okay, the impression. I want you just to remember that word, the impression. Okay, it's not a word that's thrown out there a lot, right? But it's common in the English language. Well, it's not common, but impression. What's your impression of that? You know, the stronger the impression of an idea is, the more often this idea represents itself and is easier and the easier it is to recall this idea. And he writes, those who take the time and study and understand these sentences, he had some previous sentences, 
will be able to do unbelievable things. And he goes back a lot. If you can understand this, you're going to be able to do a lot with it. Now, what I, the main thing that I got from that is this is what, why you draw in your sketchbook. This is what makes you a better artist. And this is where recalling things comes into play is the impression. When things make an impression on you, just think about, I want to, th I want you guys to think about things in your life. I don't care. Maybe it was a building you went to. Maybe it was a city you explored. Maybe it was a person you met. Maybe it was a car you saw. Maybe, I don't care what it is, but think about that word impression. The things that made an impression on you are the things that will stick in your mind and you're going to be able to recall and create that picture in your mind and think about it. And I think about, man, that is so true. Everything that has honestly made an impression on me, no matter what it is, those things are so much easier to recall in your memory and go, man, I remember that. You know, I had a great time. It really, you don't even throw out the word impression. You think about it like that was an awesome experience, you know, so you can tie an experience with impression. But the impression is almost like a stamp. I saw something and this is where it relates in art. I'm, I'm just, yes, the other day, going to the movie theater. We're getting ready to park. We're driving, all of a sudden the guy crosses right in front of our car. This guy's all hunched over and looks awesome. And I'm, I said to my wife, I said, look at that guy's posture. Look, look at that guy. And I'm just staring at him. And at that moment, it made an impression on me. And still today, I can recall what that guy looks like a few days later. My memory, it's built up my memory because it was an impression. So if you're not creating impressions in your mind, if you're not paying attention if you're not paying attention to get these stamps of impression in your mind, you're going to have a real hard time recalling them. So people go, and you know, this is with my students all the time. How do you make up poses? How do you put life in poses? And I go observation. I'm always observing. I'm looking. I'm, I'm just paying attention, you know. I'm, but now my word is impression because of this book. You got to get the impression. It's not just, just that observation for recollection and doing memory sketching and doing things in your sketchbook or later on a client tells you, you know, we want you to design these kids and, you know, these kids, are, this one kid is very, you know, he's a very serious kid and is very blah, blah, blah. And they're explaining it and you go, what? kid have I ever met that was like that? Sometimes it's easier for me now because I've had kids the last 16 years. So I've been around kids and there was a kid that used to, I used to carpool all the time, used to show up at our house and he was very stoic and very serious and very straightforward, but he made an impression on me to where I still remember him today, even though it was quite a few years ago. And those sort of things are that kid that you saw that was a little bit more bubbly and a little bit more excitable. And again, these impressions. So if you just think about that, that you don't always have to be drawing. You don't always have to have a pencil in your hand. You just don't. What you want to do as an artist is through observation, the impression. If you, if you like color, if that's something that, you know, is important. You know, I remember I was... I we had a schoolism event and I was uh, and, and Craig Mullins was there and he had done a talk and had dinner with him afterwards and I was talking with him and we were walking to the uh, the dinner area and he was just like looking around like this and it's like man look at those colors look look at that. You know, he, I'm just like, whoa, man. You know, this guy, he's looking at color. I don't look at color like that. He was looking at color and just like at that moment, the impression was being sealed into his mind. So now his mind and all the nerves and all the things that are going on in there are zip zapping and popping and pinging for when he goes to do that next illustration, those colors are probably going to start to make its way through the drawing. And that's how you get better in art. That is, I think, with the, with this book, again, it's not an art book. It's not about art. It's about everything else, which is just boom, makes your head explode. 
But what it is when you look at that, man, it's the impression. When those artists that we look at and I go, man, look at that. Look at that artist. I'm just looking in front of me right now, this Albert Dorn. A lot of you guys might not even know who Albert Dorn is. But I got these. I'm just going to cover up the price that I paid for that. But look at these Albert Dorns, uh, these images. These are the originals. That's the actual size. You know, it's pretty small. Look at this. Look how small those are. And these were like in the famous artist course book. And sorry, I can't get a, a better image for you here. But just looking at that artwork, looking at the detail, you know, and just the, the emotion and the, the, the feeling that's coming through these. But Albert Dorn made an impression on me when I was learning. And so through that experience, it made me want to learn how to do that at one point in my life. But you evolve and you move on and you don't, I don't feel like you're always sticking with the same thing. You never do. I, I, I've never done it. I don't know many artists that do. But you find your heroes. You find the people that make an impression on you and you go, man, I love the way that that guy treats hair, treats folds, treats color, treats shapes, treats whatever it is that they're doing. You're looking at that, but at that moment, whether you know it or not, if you're truly paying attention, truly paying attention to it, at that moment it makes the impression. So if you're just copying art for art's sake, just to just copy it because your teacher said, you need to study this, and you're just like, man, I don't want to study that. It's not making an impression on you. Do you think you're going to be able to recall that? Can you recall anything from your earlier childhood in classes that you were in that you didn't give a rat's ass about? No, because it never made an impression on you. Do you remember those teachers that you recall still today? Yes, because they made an impression on you. Do you remember those certain assignments a teacher threw out at you and you're like, whoa, what is this? Yes, because it made an impression on you. So think about that, that you can control you can control what makes an impression on you. And if it excites you, then it's going to stick in there. And that's very important too. You got to get excited about it. Don't try to chase art. Don't try to chase a path. Don't try to chase a career that just doesn't make an impression on you, that doesn't excite you because it's not happening. You can do it and you're going to get involved in it. And what's going to happen is you're just going to be just... I don't know. It's, it's just not going to feel good. You're not going to do anything more with it. I think you're going to get to a level and you're going to stop and you're not going to keep pursuing it. So finding those things that are impressionable, that's what keeps leading you on. For myself, with caricature, it made an impression on me and I started doing caricature, which led to character design, which I got a fascination for. And every time I looked at different designers, made an impression on me. So when I look, I, it sort of zaps you. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that zap. And sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you don't have it right now. It's not there. You're not feeling the zaps, you know. And speaking of, I just saw them going zap, but I just saw Hotel Transylvania 3. Loved it. I thought it was awesome. Great job, guys, who worked on that. Um, but they talk about zing. Zing only happens once, you know, the zing. And the zing doesn't happen only more than once, but let's just call it a zap. The zap doesn't, it's not only happening one time. You're going to get these over and over and over again. You keep meeting different artists. I met a few new artists this weekend, this past weekend at Comic-Con that I was at. And just, you know, just like, whoa, man, look at that. Yeah. And the thing is, not to get, when you get that impression, when you meet someone and you see their artwork and you're blown away by it, the thing is, is try, don't get into your competitive mode, you know, don't be competitive, be creative. Wallace Waddles said that, okay? Don't get into that funk of just like, oh my God, I can never do that. That person is so much better than me. How is this ever going to happen for me? Because, and then all of a sudden you just get, you feel like you're getting thrown down. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, but it's up to you as the creator to control that. You got to have the awareness 
to be able to control that, to say, to say that that's making an impression on me, that's inspiring me. So the thing is, you don't replace your eyes, the letter I, you know, you want to just make sure that you're not being intimidated, you know, by it. Okay. That's the most important thing is just like, don't be inspired by it, not intimidated. Okay. And that's what you're doing when you're looking at work. It's like, you know, that's freaking brilliant. Don't go into that realm of man, one, just go. That's inspiring. I like what they're doing. I got to remember. These are the things you got to keep remembering. You got to keep remembering. Again, I can't remember the author. I might have mentioned him again, but my mind, I, this is the part of my weakness, and I, unfortunately, is my memory. Um, a lot of times recalling things, and that's why I'm, I've, I've, had, I've struggled in my art, personally, because of my, my memory. It's been like for forever, and especially when it comes to names, and I don't even want to get started with that, and I just want to say, if ever I see you, and I don't remember your name, but I've met you before, please, please don't be offended. It's just, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, I forgot what I was going on there. But the thing is, yeah, just, just don't be intimidated. Just try to be inspired by it. Just know that this is happening. It is a real feeling. I am feeling a little bit of... Oh, it's like you feel a little bit of unworthiness, you know, if that that's maybe what you kind of feel when you see something, you feel a little bit of, um, you know, there's going to be a little bit of resentment in there. There's going to be a little bit of why aren't, why aren't I that good? Why is that guy so much better? What did he do to get so much better? And and then you go, uh, you know, back back to that, that quote, um, it's just be yourself. Because everyone else is already taken. Those people are good at what they do because they're good at what they do. And that's where they are and that's who they are. And that's what's going on in their life. And who knows how many hours and their circumstance and the amount of time and energy and effort they put into it. We don't know the whole story. All we ever see from people usually is the end result. You never see the amount of sweat equity, so to speak, that goes into someone's training from the gym all the way through art. You just don't see it. You don't know. You just see the end result and think that guy's just so much better than me and that blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and, 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 and I'm going to get that little bit of jealousy and I'm going to have that. And yes, yes, it's real. And yes, is it okay to feel like that? And yes, because you cannot just keep pushing these feelings within you and try to pretend that it's not real. So I think when you identify it and you go, you know, this is a real feeling. I do feel a little jealous. I look at these Albert Dorns. I look at these Mort Druckers behind me. I look at that Drew Struzan back there and go, damn, that's awesome. You know, it's so good, but it's making an impression. And so what's going to benefit you is if you can just pull it. It's not that you're going to become a clone. I felt for the longest time I was trying to become a clone. I was trying to become a clone of Mort Drucker and Jack Davis and do their thing. And that's what I was drawing all the time. It's just because that's what I was doing all the time. Eventually, that they, those people, your, your impression, your impression builders, I'll call them, are there for a reason. Your impression builders come into your life for uh, for because they need to, because that's where they are in your life. You come across them, you discover them, and you go, that person's entered my life for a reason. I can either choose to push them aside and ignore that, otherwise I can say, you know what, I know that I struggle with hands, I know that I struggle with drawing clothing, I know that I struggle with these things, but look what these guys are doing, look how they do that, and man, they do, it looks so effortless. And I can honestly say, these drawings up here that I have behind me, this Guns of Navarone by Mort Drucker up there. The reason I bought that original many, many years ago, because it had whiteout on it. Say what? Whiteout? What are you talking about? Some of you guys don't even know what whiteout is. Whiteout, and I may have some here because, you know, oh, look at that. I got it right there, nice and handy, whiteout. <laughs> so, you know, you're putting on your artwork just to cover up mistakes. Because you make mistakes. So when I saw Mort Drucker's stuff and I'm just like, oh, oh my God, he makes mistakes. 
He makes mistakes. You know how, and I remember that feeling at that moment. And the reason I can recall it right now is because it made an impression on me. The fact that Mort Drucker from Mad Magazine made mistakes. He whited stuff out and it's all over different parts of those originals. And I loved it and I wanted to have it. And I think I got that original to remind me that it is okay to make mistakes. That you don't have to be perfect. That you don't have to be the best draftsman in the world. It's like, what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to show? And if you can start to say and make your life just what it is that you want to do. Just focus on what you want to do. Be inspired. Find those impression builders. Let them be a part of your life. Don't blow them off. Don't make them just like make excuses or be jealous or anything else that can happen. And I'm saying it as I've gone through that. And I did it. But I'm saying now as the later version of my younger self... Try not to think like that. You know, there's part of it that you could say, well, well, Stephen, when you, when you have that jealousy, when you have that, man, that guy's better, well, that's going to make me do better. That's not a bad thing if that's what it does. But don't do it out of anger. Don't do it out of resentment. Don't do it out of jealousy. Do it out of that guy's so good. I want to be as good as that guy. You know, and let that be a driving force to make, to push you. And I believe that's a powerful way to go about it because I think you do that. If there was just a bunch of shitty artwork out there all over the place, well, you could say, well, I don't need to get better. There's this shitty artwork out there. I mean, we see things that are made that in all honesty look like crap that are extremely successful. And you go, how the hell that person has no draftsmanship skills, that person this, that, that, yet they're doing so well. You got to put that aside and go, see, that's proof that that person, they took initiative, they did what it is, they followed through with what it is that they wanted to follow through and made something happen. So if you can start to switch your mindset, if you are in that phase, because I meet people all the time who are in a phase of stopping their growth pattern due to the fact of being overwhelmed and jealous and looking at everyone else's, you know, work. Again, it's a common theme, and that's why it comes up a lot in these art talks, but that's very important, you know, to make sure, okay? So that's it, just ending note here, guys. If um, I only have a few spots left for my 1440 um, retreat, drawing retreat, happening August 3rd through 5th in Santa Cruz. If you want to come, come on out. I'd love to have you out there. It's a real awesome time. I did it last year. It's a small group of people. There's usually only about um, six to eight people that come, and it's it's beautiful, but there's still a few spots left with that. It is a little bit on the pricey side, you know, because you're getting accommodations, you're getting food, you're getting a place to stay. But while we're there, we're just, you know, we're out in the Redwood Forest. We do go on a drawing hike um, one of the days, just finding, just getting into your head a bit, little dis discovering the mindset, drawing exercises, uh, meditation sessions in the morning, little yoga session. And just if you want to unwind and just rejuvenate and you feel like things are getting crazy, invest in yourself. That's what you got to do. It's an important thing. All right. So thanks for watching. and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.